Hey, Christina. What's up? Hi, how you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing all right. You still in uh, Greece? Um, that's what the background looks like, right? I'm in Greek town. I'm in Greek town. Tarpon Springs. The closest thing we got. <laughs> it's like, hey, it feels temperature wise. It's like we're in Greece right now. Comsi, comsa. It's okay. <laughs> Anyways, what's up? How you doing? You good? I'm good. I'm very good. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Excited to get you on the podcast. This is going to be fun. Be I think it's going to be a fun chat. Um, why don't we just jump right into it? Let's tell my listeners who you are. Um, take it away. Hey, how you doing? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn. You can hear it in my voice. Now, my name is Christina Mavronas. Uh, I'm an actor, multi-passionate artist. I'm a Greek Brooklynite first generation. Um, yeah, and I'm a, I'm a ball of a little bit of everything here. Like an everything bagel. A little bit of a bagel. bagel. And a do bagel. you guys say bagel or bagel? I'm going to tell me. Bagel. Hard L. Bagel. I remember one time I heard somebody say bagel. It was back in like high school days. And I was like, what is he saying? Like, I don't get it. Unless he's being silly, you know, like, oh, you got your boggle. No, no, no. They were, he was being serious. Oh, no, I have okay. a boggle. I'm like, what? Anyways. So you are an actor, you said, right? Yes. Actor. So actor tell writer. me, actor slash writer? Actor. Yeah, I do. I've been self-taught writer. So I keep, I keep on my toes with that. Is acting something you always wanted to do? Or is this something that just came out of nowhere? Um, I wouldn't say came out of nowhere, but I didn't. I didn't wake up at like, you know, five, six years old being like, I'm going to act forever. But I was always a performer. I was always, mm -hmm. you know, making fake telenovelas for my parents, dancing, being in little plays and performing in, uh, you know, festivals and stuff. But it wasn't until later on in my life that uh, things started to click. And there was this feeling of like, I'm there's a curiosity there's a voice mm. guiding me towards there and that it took me a while to truly pay attention to it and have the guts to do it and respect that voice and not judge it yeah and then I and then acting I, takes guts no yeah it takes guts and really <laughs> you gotta you gotta be willing to, to to be silly and to fall on your face and be like all right um, you know, so you got into acting. Talk to me about your acting style. Like, what genres or what style do you give off in your, or do you like doing a little bit of everything, or do you hone in on one thing? Uh, so comedy comes natural to me because that's just my everyday life. Uh, and, and don't get it twisted. Comedy to do on TV is very hard. It's not. It's not easy. But mm -hmm. um, I would say. Drama is a lot of my world as well. So it's drama, comedy, and then put it together. And I love that. And you like expressing your Brooklyn accent in your skits? Yeah, you know, because for a, a very long time, it was uh, hold back the accent. And with respect to, yes, you need to know when to put it on, take right. it off, reserve a little bit. But it's a big part of me. And I think part of my comedy and what I love is where I'm from, which, you know, Brooklynites were a dying breed. So here I am. Here I am. Here she is to save the, the Brooklyn community. <laughs> I'm here to save us. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you, when, when was it that you started getting into acting? At what age? Um, so I would say probably it's, it's, it's been, a, it's been a little bit of a while, but I would say like seven years or so i started off doing more uh improv and sketch and taking classes all here and there but it wasn't un until a good five years six years where I, I took myself seriously so it wasn't like you popped up during the tiktok pandemic when everyone became an actor on tiktok it's not you were doing it way before that i was doing it before, before that before the social media boom before the, before the big boom, I was still there. You know, I was trucking along. No, during during COVID time and and all of that, I was I was going through my uh the the dark night of my uh 
of myself as an actor and creator. I was really pulling apart pieces uh, and being and really focusing on myself. I mean, like how how am I coming? Am I coming correct? Right. What inspires you to create all this? Create the characters you play. Create on camera. Create on paper. What inspires you? What What inspires my my comedy and my creativity, or what inspires me to to do it? Your creativity. Oh man, ev- everything and everyone, and it's I have. I have so many different personas and voices and point of views of things. And what's funny that it's my parents, it's my neighborhood. Um, It's taking a scenario and saying, what if this, Um, and it's just life in general. There's so many intricacies and little quirks in life that it's, how does it not spark something? I don't know if that makes sense. It does. No, it does make sense. Um, I want to talk about how, obviously, you've been acting before the social media boom, but how has social media changed the landscape? Has it been more beneficial where it's like your online portfolio, but also you're putting yourself out there every day, more eyeballs? How has social media changed the, the landscape of it? Social media has changed the landscape by allowing me to connect with the community. There's a business side of it, of course, 100%. Um, It really does, for me personally, because I'm always coming up with these creative ideas and I don't know what to do with them, it really allowed me to put them on a platform and connect with people. And it kind of empties out all of the craziness that's going on, but it helps showcase me as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the good thing about social media and I learn by doing so even before social media yes I would write my you know my ideas and try to get a team together and create things but that takes a lot of time so social media helps me and I still struggle with it from time to time but this is an idea write it complete it do it execute it and it helps me not procrastinate it helps me get ideas out um and connect with everyone so it really has helped me when you say connecting and building community also social media this isn't really in the acting part but you were part of the social media boom a couple years ago called clubhouse we got to talk clubhouse i am all for clubhouse man i've tell me how that like Flash in the pan of your life changed the direction of everything. I one connected with like not like-minded artists, but specifically Greeks that I have disconnected from for a while. I went to Greek school. I'm in the Greek community, but I separated from that aspect and it made me find them again. But Clubhouse, and it's so interesting because you're in this platform that no one really sees you and for me i was connecting with people and i and during such a really dark and crazy time in the whole world and to know that i'm able to make people laugh over just this and and receive it as well that really did open up my eyes and i connected with other creatives that you, it was just kinship and it was just people finding one another. And yeah. there was, it, it's also like, there's no, f- there's, there's no video there. So mm-hmm. people felt a little bit more brave to like, yeah. you should do this or talk about this and open yourself up and come out from this like shell that everyone's hibernating. So it really, it, it was just like, here you go. Just do whatever you got to do. Just do whatever you got to do. You know? Mm. I love that. Notch clubhouse was such a game changer, even though it was such a flash in the pan gone, but those that used it to what it allowed us to do just changed everything. Like our networks grew exponentially. Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known half of the people that I know now. All you had to do is just walk into that random room you did. And then we all started talking. That's it until three in the morning. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes later. (laughs) Uh, What do you enjoy most about what you do? making people laugh 
and uh, selfishly knowing that I'm not the only, <laughs> it's not just me alone in my own head. Like if I open it up, there's other people that are just as eccentric or weird mm -hmm. like I am. And yeah, it helps me. It helps me ground a lot of myself and who I am. I'm always ideas up here. So yeah. getting to create and bring it down and showcase to people. Um, it helps me. It helps me with that bridge between two worlds that I'm always in. What advice would you give that the next Christina Mavronas, someone who wants to become an actor and is starting from scratch? Starting from complete scratch. Oh, I want to be an actor. Give that person the advice. They they were inspired by one of your videos, and now they want to be an actor. What's that advice you're giving them? I would say, <clears throat> know, know thyself. Take time to also really know who you are as an individual. Uh, your morals getting messy, going out there in the world. But number one thing is just start somewhere because this thing is not like you don't, you don't just go to school and pre-med school and know it's this class, this class, this, then you get out and then you find a job and you're doing what you got to do. It's, it's not as tangible. So you have to really just start somewhere, be present with it, have fun most of all, and see what's really making, I mean, we, we all have different paths, right? Everyone's uh, way of doing it is going to be different, but I think the more in tune you are to what feels right, uh, what's a good scary, what's a bad scary is going to help. And then no matter what, there's going to, there's going to be highs and lows. And when those lows are happening, know that it's okay that there are lows. You need you need that time to cocoon. You need that time to reflect. And community is really, really important. And just because your parents don't understand it doesn't mean it's not right. <laughs> so yeah, it would just start somewhere, have fun, you know, be centered, really get to know who you are and how you want to move through it all. Cause I think that's really important. It could be a really ugly place, but it could also be a really beautiful one. If you find the like-minded creatives and build from creativity and inspiration and know that the universe, like there's enough for everyone. It's beautifully said. It yeah. was a beautiful answer. <laughs> all right. I want to pivot now. Uh, this is a Greece podcast, so I want to talk a little bit about Greece. Um, talk to me. Tell me, where are you from in Greece first? Where's home in Greece? Kerkira and Kalamata. Okay. There you go. Kalamata Super. in the house. Kalamata, that's right. Remember when we thought we could have been cousins? Yeah. We still might be. Still might be. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I haven't been to Kerkira yet. Um, obviously, oh, gonna no, I know. I hear all these good guys. things. It's just so out of the way. It's so out of the way. It's so luscious, though. And then you could just go to Italy. You know, just go. Hop I, hop it's hop. just so out of the way. No, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I was supposed to go a couple of years ago, and then like plans changed in the last minute, and we didn't end up going. Get get up. Went somewhere else. You gotta go when I'm there. Hey, that's what I'm waiting for all these years. That's what I'm waiting for. All right. Um, how often do you get to go back? I've been very, very fortunate to go almost every year until I was about, not almost, every year until about 18. And then I started exploring other places. Um, I love traveling. I love I love being in a, you know, a place that I feel uncomfortable, like I don't know anything. But I go back almost every year now, even if it's a pit stop. Mm. It's home. Um, where are your favorite places? Give me three favorite Greek islands we'll do mainland after first islands okay and you can't say i know aside I know. from that one so you get four so that's one you get three more okay number one kriti okay i uh, like absolutely um naxos 
So I take it you like food. The two places with the best food. Yeah. <laughs> feed me. Love me and feed me. That's all I want. <laughs> As I, I, I inhaled a bagel within 0.5 seconds. <laughs> I gotta talk to Tony. Um, <laughs> and um, I would say Skopelos. Ooh, is that where Mamma Mia's church is? Yeah, no. so I have a very funny story about that. If you oh, let's hear it. I did, hear it. I, I'm not sure if I told you this, but I went with my cousin and, you know, we were just like island hopping, having fun. And we went out one night. We were drinking. We we were smashed the next day. And she was like, hey, I, I want to do something fun tomorrow. You know, not like just like typical beach day. And I was like, all right. Like, pick it. I'll let you do what you got to do. So she books this boat trip. And we wake up the next day hungover. We're like, all right, we're going to be on a boat going to another part. Like, that's beautiful. Like, that's the best way to experience being hungover is being in Greece. You know, you feel it. On a boat drinking more. There you go. And we get on the boat. And I'm just like glasses on like typical New York. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, (laughs) why? We get on. And then as the boat like takes off, like you just see the little propeller. I hear, all right, everyone, you Mamma Mia fans, let's get ready. Non-stop Mamma Mia singing. (laughs) Like I was just like, and I just slowly turned and looked at Angelica. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? And she was just like, like Kermit the Frog smiling, like in the corner, like, because it was just, it was so loud. And it, and it was all like tourists. Yeah. Got off their hearts. It was a Mamma Mia tour. It was a Mamma Mia tour. They were, they were having a, a the time of their life and I'm so happy for them. But my brain, like a cabana the whole time. And it was just like, no, and it was every song I couldn't try. I like, I, I was like, you guys don't want to hear me sing right now. <laughs> it, was, it was a very common. It was just like, it was out of a scene where I'm just like looking at my cousin and I'm like, I'm going to murder you right now. Uh, but yeah, I'll never forget that. That's incredible. All right. So <laughs> Scorpio good choice. Uh, give me your three favorite mainland places aside from Guadalajara. Mm, okay. I, cliche i guess i don't know but forever athens yeah that's not it's fine that's, good answer i know i know it's a go-to but it's really it's it, it gets better every year from my how is how i feel about it it really does and there's a presence there you 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 can feel how ancient it is and um you know a lot of people want to talk things about like you know like all the graffiti and this and that but forever mm-hmm. it'll forever be a place of expression and that's right. what i love um Ioannina mm-hmm. like that area yeah right there and um I would say Volos yeah yeah that was really magical I like how you're drawing the landscape of the map <laughs> near Volos it's got a little hook it's got this little it's hook up- Volos spot it's that like I the think- upside down of the Massachusetts arm but upside down <laughs> exactly <laughs> Yeah, there was that was really um I almost felt like I was off the coast of so, like something I don't know out of a movie. It was it was very very intimate. Um yeah, it was beautiful. Like three Greek dishes. Just three? Yeah. That's what makes it a challenge. Otherwise you're just going to list off every single one. Okay, number 1 Stifada. It's a tradition. Mm-hmm. Me and my father try to make beat the other one and how we make it every yeah. year. Okay. Um, I want to say pasticho, but if there's a if, if a place is known for the musaka, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then it's a tie between Hutapodi or Padakia. Good choices. I like that you didn't just settle for like the gyro or the salads. No, that's a given. That's that's air. That's exactly. like that comes with every. You don't listen. I don't even think that's like a dish. That's a given. You don't Thanks. go to a place and be like, "Am I gonna get a salad?" That's like the number one. Th- you're like salad done. 
yeah, you don't yeah, think yeah. about that, you know? So you can't. Fair. Um, so I know you, you target comedy when you do your acting. Have you ever considered or have maybe you have done it? Have you ever explored stand up? I actually uh recently just did my uh first open mic. How'd it go? It was horrible. <laughs> let it all out. This is the place to let it all out. I got like I got like one little like uh in the background. Amazing. Hey, that's your first. Yeah, that's no, your first it's, ha- no, it's your first ha ha. It's your my first first. show. It's your first ha ha. My first ha ha. Yeah, no, I you know, I don't know. It's such a different craft and I really do respect it. And I think that's why I'm, I was like so hesitant and so worried because it's, it is very, very different from acting and it's, it's in its own, you know, world and I respect it and it's not easy. Um, But it's something that I've never really done. And I've been looking for something to, you know, have that feeling where you're, you know, you're scared, you're uncomfortable. I think that's where you. It puts you in that new uncomfort, fear, yeah. a good scary, a good scary, like you said earlier. Yeah, and that's where you grow. And I also found even a deeper respect for comedians, like seeing their process. I like learned, and I, I'm still gonna, I'm still exploring it. Even the great ones did get crickets the, at first. So, oh yeah, what is, like Larry David uh, was always like booed or something like that yeah. like he never really got any laughs on stage and he would like get into fights with his audience that's awesome <laughs> that's me i'm like why the f- aren't you laughing that was fun <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah well, you the, know? Reason, the reason i'm also asking like if you is something you want to explore would you even consider exploring trying that in greece yeah i think i don't yeah okay. i would uh, performing in greece in general is a goal of mine. There you go. That's what I was getting at. Is it a goal to perform in Greece? Oh yeah. I will it will happen. That's the way to that's the way to say it. Not I hope it happens. It will happen. It will happen. Yeah. The only the only thing with with that is it is a different audience there than here. Like the humor in Greece is different here and the Greeks there are different than the Greeks here. Um in your opinion, like I know a lot of people have differences between notice the differences between, but what do you how, how do you feel about the difference differences between the Greeks of the diaspora and the Greeks of Greece? Do you see a huge difference? I think so, yeah. I think um but it it's different, but it's also like different but on the same coin. I think people are always how should I phrase it? The Greek diaspora here, we are uh, we are torn between two worlds. And we're, yeah. uh, a lot of us who are first generation are still dealing with things from the past coming into our present while we're having difficulty s- figuring out our future because there's this and who are we? Are we, uh, uh, you know, the idea of what our parents want to be because they came from certain hopes and dreams. There's, there's so many things there. And I think one of my biggest issues is that, you know, Greek is a state of mind and an honor and a respect. And if you feel Greek and there's even a small percent of you that's curious about something, trying to learn the language, even if you don't know the language, but you're learning the food, there's something there, like you are Greek. And Hmm. for, you know, sometimes I see the Greeks, Greeks not respond so well to the Greek diaspora. And I think that's one of the biggest issues with Greeks. Like we have to not be against one another and decide what is Greek enough or who is, it's, we really have to merge and see that the Greek diaspora is trying and trying to figure it out while also in respects to, Hey, you know, you're trying to figure it out. Listen to where the Greek Greeks (laughs) with from our roots also coming from and the stories that they have to share. And especially us as going back to Greece as, you know, on holiday, there's a lot of struggle going on back home. So it's, it's nice to ever just slow down and listen to them as well. I don't know. 
that makes sense. Okay. Uh, earlier, I asked you what inspires your creativity. Now, I want to ask you what inspires your work ethic. I have to have some form of work ethic if I want to show up for my self, my inner child. And my creativity comes from many places. But when I look back in my life, there was this Christina that I think was, was there creating and trying to create. <clears throat> but didn't have the tools to properly know how to go about it. Mm -hmm. And I am in order for myself to achieve these goals that I have small or large, I need to show up for myself, which means showing up for her. And I also need to show up. I have three nieces. We are a creative family and it's hard to be an artist or any sort of creative individual in this world. So I hope that one day I can be that role model for them. And I feel like I owe it to my heritage. There's, I feel like I have, you know, it's hard for me to even say this, but like some gift, even if, even if it's this small and I don't want to lose that. And in order to not lose that, I need to create some kind of work ethic that will allow me to keep showing up for it and create and get more tools and build more and create that into some, you know, a bigger bud and a bigger bud and mm. then grow into a nice big olive tree. Perfect. Nice way to put that wrap to it. Uh, just two more questions for you. Um, how do you define success? Oh, okay. I think success is, um, there's multiple layers to it. It's not just one end all goal. And I think it's important to look at the small goals and big goals of yourself, focusing on yourself. Are you happy with the progress that you've made in this part of your life? Uh, if there was a big goal, but you didn't get to achieve that big goal yet, did you chip away? To, did you chip away at it at some form? Are you happy with your relationships on this planet? Um, if it's financial success, can you? Can you support yourself? Are you able to pay it forward and buy someone who has less than you a cup of coffee? It's it's truly those little moments of success that will get you to this big dream, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and I think you need to be happy with yourself first and foremost. And that's where... That's how, that's how I de define success, being happy with all the little self-growth patterns that you've seen, if that makes sense. It made perfect sense. Does anything I say today makes sense. <laughs> it does. It does. All right. One last question. It's what I ask everybody before we wrap up this show. And it is one simple question. What does being Greek mean to you? Kefi, Philoxenia, Art, Honoring the Land. It's ancient and it's old and it's something, it's something very, very special. And being Greek to me is uh, very deep roots and it's uncovering them and understanding them and it's special. Greek is Greek. It's very, very magical for me. Um, and I think anyone can relate to that with their own heritage, but, uh, it's. Greek people have created so many things in this life. We are the inventors of so much. There you go. So we have a duty, um, to honor that and honor other people with that. So. Beautifully said. So. Where can we find you? Where can my listeners find you? See all your videos. Is there a website? Is there social medias? Let's hear. Yeah, uh, social media, Instagram and TikTok is my government name. So Christina Mavronas with a C-H. Mavronas, M-A-V-R-O-N-A-S. 
the scams. The scams are always calling us. <laughs> or as my father says, scamulikalas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, on Instagram and TikTok, it's Christina Mavronas. Uh, website is to come soon. Um, I've been also on YouTube for a little bit as well. Um, but that's mostly Instagram and TikTok. Is there. there you go. Guys, this has been Christina Mavronas. You can find her on Instagram, TikTok, at Christina Mavronas. Christina, thank you for coming on. I am so grateful for you. Thank you for having me, Tony. I appreciate you. Appreciate you too. Hope to see you soon. And we will talk to you guys again on the next episode of Grease Chats. Once again, this was Christina Mavronas on Grease Chats with Tony Cariotis. Bye, Christina. Ciao.